Dylan Beavers, you are a Baltimore Oriole. Tell me about those emotions, hearing those words. What does it feel like? Yeah, it was super exciting. Um, I wasn't too sure kind of as the draft was rolling along where I'd end up. Um, and then the Orioles called um, at that pick and it was super exciting. Just knowing I'm going to have, you know, I found a home and uh, it's with the Orioles. So I'm super, super stoked. Um, grateful they believe in me. So yeah, it'll be good. What a, you know, leading up to the drafts, did you have any inclination that Baltimore might have been the team to take you? Because we were hearing the Oakland A's, we were hearing the Yankees, we were hearing the Giants. And, I, you know, <laughs> we were a little caught off guard by the Orioles, I would say. So take me through your perspective. What, how did that kind of go for you? Yeah, I didn't, I honestly did not think that it would be the Orioles if I had to guess. I knew, you know, anything was possible. I didn't really have an exact idea of where I'd end up, but definitely did not expect the Orioles to be where I would end up. So it's pretty cool. Now you're uh, focusing your attention to Baltimore and, you know, looking at the current way they're playing right now, number one, uh, and two, the system that they've kind of developed over the last year, you, you have guys like Gunnar Henderson that are going to be right there with you every day. Um, you look at Ryan Mountcastle already out there on the field. Uh, it looks like he's going to be a big face for you guys. And then, well, we add Dylan Beavers. Um, I mean, how cool is that to be part of this group? And hopefully, you know, one day Jackson Holiday, that number one overall pick, will be right there with you guys too. Yeah, yeah, it's really exciting. You know, they have uh, definitely, definitely have a great farm system. So um, it's kind of it's an honor to be added to that. Uh, I'm excited to play with some other great players. Um, yeah, super excited. You're coming from the Central Coast. Uh, you know, what's crazy is Brooks gets picked eighth, you get picked 33rd, and then Drew Thorpe is taken at the 61st pick. We've never seen this high quality of a draft from the Central Coast. What, what does that say about how Paso Robles and Mission Prep specifically groomed you? And obviously how Brooks and, you know, even though Drew didn't grow up here, how he eventually grew through the system of being on the Central Coast. Well, what does that mean to you to be part of this kind of trend that baseball is working in the right direction out here? Uh, yeah, I think I think it's definitely hard to get exposure um, being from kind of San Luis Obispo area just because it's almost on a bit of an island between the two big cities in California um, where most of baseball kind of goes on. Um, but I think just kind of the group of talent that came through, I think it was a little bit of luck for sure. Um, that kind of pushed everybody else in the area that played baseball to, um, you know, chase that aspiration, those, those dreams um, of playing high level baseball. So I think just kind of, it started with Cooper and Brooks, you know, they're, they kind of were the first guys to leave and play top level baseball. And that kind of inspired a lot of other guys and uh, show them uh, in the area that there's a way to go play high level baseball, even though we're kind of on an island. Now you're playing the highest level baseball. Um, you know, what are those current emotions? How do you feel right now knowing that, you know, your future is now with this Baltimore Orioles organization? Um, yeah, I, I feel great. I'm super excited. Uh, like I said, it was a little bit of a surprise. I mean, didn't necessarily say they they were who I expected to end up with but I'm super pumped I can't wait to go out there um yeah I'm just excited to get going and get better it's pretty rare to find Orioles fans on the central coast I would say there may be maybe one <laughs> in the entire yeah. area for all we know uh yeah. you're gaining quite a few out here so what yeah. do you want fans here on the central coast to think of, you know, the move to Baltimore and, and kind of how should they view this? Um, yeah, I hope that people who are fans of me will, you know, root for the Orioles uh, just because that's where I'm ending up. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of new Minnesota Twins fans. Um, so, yeah, I think I think just it's, a, it's an honor for people to um, root for me and follow my career and stuff. So, yeah, it's exciting. There's, there's going to be some new fans in the area. Okay, what do you want Baltimore Orioles fans to know about you? Because I was going through Twitter yesterday and, um, you know, even just talking to a few Orioles fans, they wanted to kind of get to know you. So take me through this. What, what should they know about Dylan Beavers outside of the fact that, man, you absolutely smashed the baseball? 
<laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think they they can kind of expect to get a a more uh, you know a composed player. I'm not I don't show a ton of emotion on the field. Um, I'm a little bit relaxed out there, but uh, on the inside, I'm an ultra competitor, very very competitive, almost to a fault. So you're going to be getting a very competitive player, um, a very hard worker. Um, yeah, I'm just excited to get going, get to work, and get better, so I can. You know, bring bring some wins to Baltimore Orioles. I know you've gotten this a lot. I'm going to have to bring it up, but you get the Christian Yelich, you get the Kyle Tucker comps an awful lot. Um, outside of those two, you know, are there any players maybe in past years that you can think of that you kind of compare to? I was, I was trying to compare it in my head and Grady Sizemore was kind of one that I came across a little bit potentially. Is there anyone maybe for you that you think of that you aspired to be like and, and now you're here? Uh, I'd say for sure. When I was in high school, it was Chris Bryant. Um, I felt like my stance and kind of have my setup and approach in the box were very similar to Chris Bryant. There was a little while where, where I tried a little bit of the J.D. Martinez approach, um, got off the plate a little bit and drove it to center field, left center. So I tried that for a little bit. But yeah, for sure, Chris Bryant was definitely someone who I looked up to for a while and tried to kind of model my game after. But that was for sure more in high school. What are you most excited about now going to the East Coast? Because you grew up, obviously, on the Central Coast. And then you played baseball at Cal Berkeley. So you are a California guy. It's kind of funny that Baltimore is the complete opposite in every way, shape, or form from where you've grown up and where you live. So is there excitement in that kind of new destination for you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's very similar to going from San Luis Obispo area up to the Bay Area in Berkeley. It was a, you know, for sure a transition, a kind of a change for me. Um, and it was, I felt like it was great for me to experience that. Um, you know, and I think moving over the East Coast, it's going to be a great experience as well. Just being able to say that I've been multiple places, you know, all over the United States and hopefully the world. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of it's kind of a blessing. And I, I think it's great for great life experience for sure. You and Brooks are going to be connected a lot down the road just simply because Team USA, same location, same draft. How cool was it, though, to be a part of the same draft as Brooks Lee? And what do you have to say about the fact that both of you selected in the first round? You're both also in the American League now. How cool would it be to face each other at the MLB level? Yeah, that would be awesome. You know, I've grown up with Brooks. He's always been a good buddy to me. Um, great friend, super good baseball player. Um, but, yeah, he's just a great guy, and I, I've learned a ton from him. He pushes me. I, even when I'm not with him, I'm following what he's doing. So I think moving forward, it's going to be the same thing. That hopefully we'll meet, meet back again at the major league level. A little different circumstance because you're in the same division as where Drew Thorpe has just landed. Um, how wild would it be to face Drew? And, and there's a very good chance this will happen down the road, either at the MLB level or leading up to the MLB level. What's that going to look like for you? That would be awesome. Um, yeah, I've never I – don't, I don't think I've ever actually faced him. He was on my team at USA. And then I, he played on my team in high school and travel baseball, but he didn't really pitch as much. He was more of a catcher. So um, that would be really interesting. He's a great pitcher. So it'd be a tough AB for sure. But yeah, he's one of my, one of my good buddies. So that would be exciting. I got two more for you, Dylan, and then I will let you go. The fact that you are now headed to major league baseball to the biggest stage there is, what, what does that feel like? When you hear your name being picked, when it's selected, and what were those initial emotions when you heard it on MLB Network? Yeah, I just kind of smiled. It was, it kind of felt like an accolade somewhat, but it's also just kind of my opportunity um, to get into professional baseball and make a push at my ultimate goal, which is not just getting drafted, but making a career, you know, being a big leaguer. Um, and so it was definitely a blessing, but it's for sure not my end goal. Kind of just uh, just a stone on the path, you know. Dylan, final one for you. You're one of the good dudes out there. You really are. And it's, it's very obvious. You carry yourself well. Uh, you're respectful to everybody. 
what would you like the new Baltimore fan base to know about you as a person? Because you had said that you're the ultimate competitor. What is your plan in terms of embracing the city of Baltimore the same way that you've embraced us out here on the Central Coast? Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I'm a pretty caring person. Um, you know, I, I'd like, I'd love to help out the city whenever I get, you know, get in a position to do that financially. I'd love to be able to help and give back as much as I can, even without money, you know, you can still give back. So I think kind of when that time comes, I'm going to try and devote as much time as I can to that kind of stuff, um, community service and everything. Um, I think I learned a lot about that admission to kind of set a foundation for me with that stuff. So definitely that, um, yeah. You did lead me to one final question. I'm sorry. I have to ask one about mission. You, you grew up going to mission prep. Um, how did that change you and grow you to get to this point? Yeah, I think it kind of just prepared me um, in a lot of aspects of life. It kind of definitely with the uh, curriculum there, it was difficult. It for sure got me ready for college academically. So that took a little bit of pressure off of me at Cal. Um, but yeah, just kind of the community there is really impactful on every student. So I think, I think that shapes great people and, um, it made a big impact on my life for sure. That's perfect, man. Hey, those were all the questions I had. This is Dylan Beavers, the new Baltimore Orioles outfielder, potentially, you know, we may see you play in multiple spots, but uh, very excited to see what happens with you moving forward. Uh, Dylan, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Appreciate it.